Epic Auditorium con su servidor Luis Alberto Bravo. Volveremos con ustedes dentro de un instante. Cowboy Tom Pritchard. Ooh, throws a haymaker to the chin of Butcher Brannigan. 328 pounds. That's how big this man is. And that is big, folks. Let me tell you, going against a 224-pounder in the form of Cowboy Tom Pritchard. You're watching the very best wrestling there is, direct from the Olympic Auditorium, the home of historic championship wrestling for many, many years in Los Angeles, California. Back body drop, roll up into a small schoolboy and it doesn't work. Butcher's up and stands at the ready and he says, come on, you punk. Throwing another haymaker in there, right to the chest. It doesn't seem to have much effect against the big Butcher. Started his career in New York about 10 years ago and uh, Migrated, uh, immigrated, I should say, down to Australia where he makes his home. Snapmare, center of the ring. Cowboy Tom Pritchard now with the advantage. Brannigan, when he's not wrestling, he loves sports fishing. And he even invented a special type of reel that you can put on your fishing rod that uh, makes it uh, super easy to cast. And uh, the reel has now been patented and uh, selling very well in Australia. But his main love is professional wrestling. And of course, every wrestler's dream to win the World Heavyweight Wrestling Championship. Just throws Cowboy Tom Pritchard into that corner. Knee lift. Butcher Brannigan. Tough, tough competitor. Got the name Butcher when he used to uh, come on television on the interviews. He used to eat raw meat right on television. He wasn't even cooked. He'd take a raw piece of meat. And just eat it. It was uh, quite a sight, I might say. And we got the name Butcher. Armbar by the Cowboy from Houston, Texas. Good man, this Cowboy Tom Pritchard. Very agile. And of course, uh, very experienced in wrestling and martial arts. Black belt in uh, judo and karate. Judo chop by the cowboy. Who, by the way, ladies, is still very much single. And uh, if you're interested, send your letters to our engineer, Mark, and he'll pass them on to the cowboy for you. <laughs> Mark says he'd like to read them first. <laughs> Okay, both wrestlers hooking up. The advantage to Butcher Brannigan. He has his man in the ropes. Throws another punch to the chest. Backhanded slap. Whips the cowboy off the ropes. Good hip toss by the big Butcher. Butcher Brannigan. Look at this, a reversal and a backslide. And it's one, only a count of one. Butcher flails out of it. It's hard to get a big man down, and yet this Pritchard uh, has managed to do so twice. Just a shoulder block right to the chest by Brannigan. This is our first event, in case you joined us a little late. Ooh, a standing drop kick. Fine move. Our first event on great wrestling from the Olympics, the home of the best wrestlers in the world today. Farber out of uh, Amarillo, Texas, a former wrestler himself. A oh, fine uh, National Wrestling Alliance official. Good crowd in this edition of Great Wrestling. Richard using a head clamp. It's a very unusual hold in so much as the Pressure is on the upper cheeks and the uh, side head area. The butcher, powerful. Look at those big arms as compared to Butcher. Got a lot of.
lot of wrestling today. A lot of top, top names that are going to be coming and appearing on our wrestling uh, cards in the weeks ahead. Names like Mil Mascaras and uh, Victor Rivera, Big Apache Bull Ramos, Pampero Furco, the wild bull of the Papas from South America. Going to have the uh, midget wrestlers on, and, uh, the lady wrestlers, and different types of matches. Cage matches, we'll have uh, pole matches. Got a lot planned for you. So be sure to tell your friends to watch. Back to that vice, Cowboy Tom Pritchard trying to wear the man down, just literally riding his back, using as much uh, weight to wear the man down as he can. When you're a little man, you've got a lot of troubles with a bigger man, especially one that weighs over 100 pounds more than you do. It's like a David and Goliath situation. Elbow right into the middle of the cowboy, into the ropes with a slap. Whip. Ooh, good move by the cowboy. Knee right to the middle, tops it for only a count of one. Butchers in the ropes, comes off. He does the same thing, but he misses and goes down right on his noggin. And the cowboy goes back to the vice. This is a good, good event for our first match on Great Western Company Olympic. We got some real barn burners coming up on this edition. I don't want to give them away. I want you to be surprised, so whatever you do, stick with us. Into that vice, Cowboy Tom Pritchard still holding on. Okay, we've got the big Butcher Brannigan. Now they're trading slap for slap, punch for punch. Both men on their knees. Both men trying to wear the other man down. Oh, that's where the knocking meets the rosin, as they say in wrestling. Butcher Brannigan throwing the cowboy head down to the mat. Now it's a reversed, and the same thing is done to the big Butcher. Both wrestlers lie in the first one shot at the America's Heavyweight Wrestling Championship. And as I know and I've uh, heard from Cowboy Tom Pritchard, he would like a shot at the World Junior Heavyweight Wrestling title. Good Beal right to the center of the ring. And look at this, a flying head scissors. Takedown by the Cowboy and Pritchard's out. One, two, over the turn of two, a split second away from the win. There he goes again. Wait a minute. Butcher's got his balance and oh, dumps him neck first into that steel corner pad. Now he picks him up, slams him to the mat. Butcher going outside the ring. Don't tell me he's going to climb those. He is. He's going to climb those ropes. He's on top of the ropes. Look at this. Look at this big man. He comes down hard and oh my gosh. I felt that. You can count to 100, I'm sure. Wait a minute, wait a minute. The referee didn't count. He, he does not give Butcher the win. He gives it to Pritchard. A disqualification. Ladies and gentlemen, referee is disqualified. Butcher Brannigan declared Cowboy Tom Pritchard the winner. Disqualified. Time limit. Weighs in at 210 pounds, just coming into the ring now for Mexico, Andreas Romero. And for Mexico, 212 pounds, the medic. My kind of match. This is a good one. This is going to be scientific action, believe me. This is the medic from Mexico and a, a very, of course, unusual wrestler. We haven't seen too much of him, but we, what we have seen, we know he's 
exceptionally well versed in wrestling. He's the son of the original El Medico, who just, you know, is a legend down in uh, Mexico and South America and Texas. And he's wrestling Arias Romero. The announcer announced him as Andreas, but it's Arias Romero. And both wrestlers hook up. Good maneuver, a sit out and body throw. That's really exceptional. Go behind by Romero. Arm whip by the medic. This is a wrestler that uh, has been wrestling in the United States very, very seldom. And now he wants to make himself. Now, wait a minute, we got a razzle that. Look at this. Good throwing leg scissors and head scissors. Both wrestlers using the Mexican style of wrestling, which is very fast paced. As you can see, full Nelson, out of a full Nelson into an arm drag. Body block into the ropes. It's hard to call. They, they move very quick. Hip toss. Flying head scissors. Drop kick that misses. Arm whip. Drag takedown. Body block. Elbow right to the back and rolls him up. One, two, three. That's it. Quick work by El Medico, your winner. We've got more wrestling, so stay with us. Here's our ring announcer. I think even he went for a uh, coke. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this bout from Mexico, the Medic. Our next event, it's a good one. It's the great Goliath against Mondo Guerrero. You know, these two have been having a little bit of a feud for years, and uh, we're going to try to uh, settle it right here, right now. Mondo Guerrero now standing at the ready. Goliath says, hey, use my tights to get me down. Nobody gets me down. Mondo Guerrero and the great Goliath. This is our third event here on Great Wrestling from the Olympic. Good arm drag takedown. Mondo, of course, using the ropes, which really isn't legal. Goliath complaining he used the shoulder strap of the uh, jersey, but he did not. Referee in there, Johnny Red Shoes Dugan. This Red Shoes Dugan, he calls him as he sees him. And as a former wrestler, he knows what goes on. Good hawk trip takedown into a figure four, reversed figure four. Pressure, of course, is on the uh, the uh, toe and the ankle and sits out with it. You could snap it easy that way. Ooh, Goliath going into the hair. Snap mare. Goliath says, watch his fist. Dugan warns him, open hand, open hand. Leg split, good move. Take down by Mondo Guerrero. Speedy Gonzalez of wrestling. I, I call him that over and over and over. He can move like no other 220 pounder I have ever seen. And when he gets tough in there, Mondo Guerrero is always in the thick of things. Former America's champion, by the way. One of the few little men to stop a big man. This wrestler has even defeated the likes of Ernie Ladd. And Ernie Ladd, for those of you who don't remember, stands six feet nine inches, 325 pounds, is called the Big Cat. Played pro ball, calls himself the king of wrestling, and yet Mondo Guerrero was one of the very, very few wrestlers to actually pin him in the ring. And Mondo is uh, roughly about 5'9 and weighs about uh, 220, a little less, fluctuates. Good wrestler, Mondo Guerrero, exceedingly well-versed. He had a fine teacher, his father, Gory, for 30 years was a master in the ring. Retired, undefeated as the World Junior Heavyweight Wrestling Champion, Gory Guerrero. We salute him. Fans have written us asking about old-time wrestlers such as Killer Kowalski and uh, Ray Thunderstern and uh, many others. And Killer Kowalski has retired and lives in 
Boston, Massachusetts, has a wrestling school that he works on and teaches youngsters the art of wrestling, amateur and professional. Ray Thunder Stern, of course, also is retired, has a gym up in San Jose, I understand. Trying to get a release, does so. Goes back to work on Goliath. Front face lock, he's crotched. Body slam, and Goliath gets away. Punch to the midsection. Picks him up and body slams Goliath. Let's do unto others time. Right, Engineer Mark? Let's see, who do you pick in this one, Mark? Yeah, in other words, you like the scientific. I don't know. I, I tell you, I think I think Goliath's a lot tougher. Than him, so. Well, that's very well put. Mark says good outwins evil. We we got an evil guy in there. There's no question. This great Goliath has done it all. And I mean, you talk about breaking rules and writing. Uh, breaking rule book. This man has added several chapters. Leg scissors and oh, I think uh, he bit him. Goliath's good at doing that. We've seen him do that before. That's not wrestling in any way, shape or form. Inside of the calf has teeth marks. I can see it. And Dugan warns him, hey, this man has not had rabies shots. You do not bite. Going to work now in the corner, the great Goliath. And, oh, you see? Mondo will just, uh, <laughs> Mondo bit him in the stomach. Punch to the midsection by Goliath. Picks him up. Backbreaker, that rack. Look at this hold. Mondo reverses it into a roll up and doesn't quite get the count, but almost. Both men stand at the ready. The great Goliath and Mondo Guerrero. Goliath started his career in, in Mexico, of course, and uh, wrestled there for many years before coming to Los Angeles and wrestling and teaming with another wrestler by the name of Black Gordman. And together, Gordman and Goliath spent roughly 10 to 12 years winning the America's heavyweight tag team title, defending it several times. In fact, they held the championship uh, belts for a total of 16 times on separate occasions. It's quite a feat. No one has ever accomplished that, uh, no other team. And it wasn't until about uh, six years ago that they decided to go their separate ways, and uh, Goliath deciding to remain on the west coast of the United States. And Black Gordman going to Puerto Rico, where I understand he's doing very, very well at this time. Hawk trip, takedown into a leg scissors. Now extending the other leg, it's kind of like a uh, split, leg split. Working on the toe, as you can see. Applying pressure, a lot of pressure. The idea with a hold such as this is to make your man submit. It's that simple. In other words, uh, while he's on the mat, he's either got to give up or the pain is too much. As you can see, his shoulders are on the mat. The referee will watch very closely and count. And a lot of times the wrestler will lose simply because he doesn't remember to raise his shoulders at the right time. Dugan, the wrestler of record. Ooh, there's a uh, raking at the eyes. Goliath gets the break. Don't sell Goliath short. You know, when you think he's hurt, he is dangerous, like several other wrestlers. Ron Starr, the Hood, they all use that technique of being injured, and then when you think you're overconfident and you get in there and think you have the man beat, they upend you. 
All right, step over into a Boston crab. It's a half crab. All Goliath has to do is really take his right leg, step over Mondo, and sit back with him, and he's got a full Boston crab. Let's see if he chooses to do that. Question is in the Mondo. And he lets it go. Mondo says he uh, pulled the trunks. And if he orders him to break it. Abdominal stretch by Mondo Guerrero. Well placed. It's a tough hold to get out of once it's applied. Of course, Mondo being a lighter weight wrestler, it might be easier because Goliath, uh, oh, Goliath using the elbow on that extended leg of Guerrero. Reversal. Backdrop into the ropes. Referee orders Mondo to break. Mondo fights fire with fire. You get nasty with Mondo Guerrero, he gives it to you back in spades. There's no question. Asked or, or you know, given. Fine wrestling. Oh, did you see that? Goliath biting again in the midsection. That's not wrestling, fans, and we don't condone it, nor do we. There he is, biting again. Oh, come on. I don't like to see things like that. Biting to me is, even a child knows better than a bite. I mean, there's no question. If that's used in the ring, there's no excuse for it. A man should be disqualified. Punch to the midsection, another punch. Punch to the face. Now we've got some boxing skills in there. Oh, here we go, there's our clock on the wall. Just looking at uh, time left in the match. We've only got uh, roughly about three and a half minutes to go. Referee telling the wrestlers, not much time in the match. And they do that for a reason, because if a man's going to win, he's got to do it before the bell rings. Otherwise, it uh, ends up a draw. In recent years, the NWA has added the stipulation that if a match goes to the time limit, the referee has the discretion to either call it a draw or give one man the victory. And it goes in the rule book as a victory for that wrestler. Punch to the side of the face by Mondo Guerrero. He's getting a release. Looks like Goliath. Oh, there's that rack, that flailing rack. Oh, and now he's choking him into that upper thigh area. Goliath stakes him out, adding a lot of pressure into that thigh with knee drops. Years ago, Freddie Blassie was a master of the knee drops. He'd get a man down and apply at least 21, 30 knee drops to a man's chest and throat. And after that, Freddie didn't even have to pin the man. He just left him there and won the match. Quite a wrestler, Freddie Blassie. Made his biggest victories at the Olympic Auditorium over many, many wrestlers. Held the WWA World Heavyweight Wrestling Championship. And, of course, defended that title uh, all over against almost every challenger at the time, from Ricky Starr to Luthez to Bob Ellis, you name them, and uh, Freddie Blassie wrestled. Stakes the great Goliath in that uh, corner, gets him up on the ropes, and drops him. Mondo adding a little bit of his misery in there. Now it's Goliath, snapmare, arm whip, body block, and here we go, both wrestlers. Oh, and he just throws Mondo out to those first row seats, right to the cement. If he threw him over the top rope, he would have been disqualified. Mondo, oh, 
look at this, a tug tackle. Mondo leaps off that top rope, catches him in the middle, rolls him up in a small package and gets him for three, the winner. Mondo Guerrero and Engineer Mark wins again. minute time limit introducing first the team coming down the aisle they weigh in at a total combined weight of 478 pounds of the world's tag team champions Maniac Tolis and Ron Starr and just stepping into the ring they are the great team here together in Southern California they weigh in at a total combined weight of 520 pounds Madrill and Walter Johnson. This is a main event to end all main events because you've got uh, four of the toughest, roughest wrestlers in the world today. I mean, uh, the man in the mask is the assassin. And the assassin, of course, is like the uh, confidant or uh, protege of rugged spoiler Ron Star. They're usually a tag team together, but. On this occasion, we have signed the Golden Greek, John Tolis, as Ron Starr's partner, and together, Tolis and Starr, who are the World Tag Team Wrestling Champions at this time, will meet Al Madrill and big number 71, Walter Johnson. Now, we've got an argument going here as to the assassin. The assassin says, I want to stay on the apron, and the referee, Dugan, says, no, you get out. You got no business being here. The fans are going wild, telling the referee to get him out, get him out. And Al Madrill and Johnson say, yeah, we don't want him here. He's got no place here. They do not want the assassin to try to interfere in the match, as he has done in the past. Tolis and uh, Star arguing, no, 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 it's okay. He bought a ticket and he wants to sit in the first row. And I guess if the man did buy a ticket, I guess he has the right to sit there. But uh, Dugan says, nope, nope, I know what you're going to do and I know what you're planning and I want the man gone. I want him in the dressing room. And Star, in the meantime, trying to distract the referee, saying, don't worry about us, just worry about them. You know, they're, they're, they're going to probably use a legal trick to try to win from us, and in the meantime, Toll is trying to take advantage from behind. You've got to have eyes in the back of your head for these men. There's, just, <laughs> there's no doubt about it. This is going to be a wild tag team match. I guarantee you it's our main event here on Great Wrestling from the Olympic. Dugan finally gets his way, and naturally he is the referee. He's the man that has the power and he tells the assassin just take off take a hike they don't need you the assassin meantime is sitting down right in ringside as we can see with our third camera down below told us saying don't worry just sit there just just relax take your shoes off enjoy the match Star goes down to the assassin, says, just sit there, don't move, don't let nobody get, get rid of you, don't let the police take you out, just sit there. The drill and Johnson, you know, working the fans up to get rid of the assassin. And the assassin just sits there. Okay, let's see, the bell sounds, and we're going to start off with uh, Ron Starr going against number 71, Walter Johnson. Let's see what Starr can do. This is a feeling out time for both these men. Advantage to Starr in the ropes. Let's see if he breaks clean. Nope, he doesn't. He throws a bunch to the midsection. That doesn't even make Walter blink. Did you see that? He didn't even blink. This man is powerful. Top wrist lock by the rugged man, Ron Starr. Let's see what Walter can do. Whoa, he just throws Starr away, and Starr decides, uh, how about you getting in there, uh, Tolis? Golden Greek sizes up number 71. Top wrist lock now. And boom, down goes Tolis. Tolis looks at him like, uh, whoop. 
see. How do you approach this? Uh-huh. Front face lock going to work, and he's lifted up off his feet and thrown away like a doll. Tolas, astonished, says that he used his trunks as leverage, and Starr complaining to the referee that the only way he could pick him up is if he used his tights. But we didn't see that. What we saw was brute strength on the part of number 71, Walter Johnson. There's that devastating headlock by the big man, Johnson. That's the hold that uh, he uses to squash footballs. He used to say he used to practice by putting a football under his arm and squeezing as hard as he could and popping footballs. He said he popped more footballs than they had on the whole uh, team. His practice for wrestling. Going to work on that head. Flailing it away. You know, with that shiny type uh, head of Tolis's with a lack of hair, it almost looks like a football. Oh, ho, ho! Tolis goes into the wrong corner and meets uh, the fist of Al Madrill, and oh, he's dazed. He doesn't know where he is. Turned around to tag uh, who he thought was Star, and it was Madrill. Now he's forcing uh, Johnson over into the uh, corner. But Johnson, brute strength, brings Tolis back into the center. Well, you talk about cauliflower ears. That's how they are born. Tolis' ears are bright red. Now Tolis ready to fight. Ah! But Drill catches him, does the same thing as Walter with that headlock. We're going to have one very steamy Golden Greek. Hamilton, Ontario, Canada is home for Tolis. Tag that never made it. Alma Drill doing that to taunt uh, Star. Star missing the tag and um, he's on the ropes and oh, upsie daisy right on his keister thanks to Walter Johnson who shook the ropes. Now he's caught. Dolas and Star Cotton and Madrill now conks their heads together. And the fans love it. They love it. Couldn't happen to two nicer guys, they're all saying. Madrill, I'll tell you, this Al Madrill, he never fails to please an audience and knows what to do and when to do it. There comes the assassin up for some sort of instigation, I'm sure. The drill. Punches! Star decks him right on the apron. Don't go away. Don't put your coffee pot on yet. Believe me, this is going to be a doozy of a main event. Red Shoes Dugan now saying, you've got to wait outside the ring. And of course, Madrill says, don't worry about it. Oh, there we go again. Tolis gets a release, but Madrill is back. He goes into the hair. Tolis now goes into the hair and throws him away. He knows that's the only way to stay out of that side headlock, but he's taken down again. Up over using the trunks. Clear use of the trunks, as you can see, which is illegal. Referee spins around. Tolis hand now on the back. tackles a leapfrog over a good drop kick by Alma Drill. Tolis is down into that side to headlock again. Fans are loving this one. Now the leverage by Spoiler Star trying to keep his shoulders down. Alma Drill's shoulders on the mat. The team Tolis and rugged Ron Star, the spoiler against Alma Drill and number 71 big Walter Johnson. Our main event here on Great Wrestling from the Olympic.
star using uh, the drill's boot as leverage and uh, then saying, no, no, I didn't do nothing. Those ropes are the winds blowing through the Olympic and blowing the ropes. That's just not the case, folks. Star using the boot. Once again, as a leverage form, the tag off is by Star to Tolis. Star now coming in the ring, stopping the drill. Tolis holding him down while Star continues to work him over. It's double teaming. Big Walter Johnson comes in the ring. Now the referee forcing Walter outside. In the meantime, they are double teaming on the drill. Dugan sends Tolis outside the ring. The tag legal man Ron Starr in there going to work on Al Madrill. Front chin lock. Ooh, standing at the ready, Al Madrill cocks his fist. Top wrist lock in the hair, illegally goes Ron Starr. Take down. Standing arm bar. Using the knee like a vice. Drill says, watch what he's doing. He's, I don't give up. Christian is in the Madrill. Now he sits out with it. Madrill can now roll, get to his feet, and that's what he's going to do, or roll up onto Star. Oh, taken down at the trunks illegally by Tolis. We all saw that. Wait a minute, there's no tag, there's no tag. <laughs> Ron Stark clapped his hands and said there was a tag, and the referee said, I heard that clap, but I didn't see you guys tag. Wait a minute, he's caught. Told us now out, star back in. These two wrestlers will do anything and anything to win a match. Once again, Madrill now getting up, and he's dumped back by Tolis. And the referee looks kind of puzzled, like, uh, what happened? And the Madrill is saying, hey, Tolis threw me off balance. I'm not doing anything, says Tolis. Referee's down to count, and he punches Madrill, and Tolis picks his nose <laughs> quick as he's... <laughs> I'm not laughing because it's funny. I'm laughing because how Tolis can get away with doing this stuff is just beyond me. This man is truly ruthless in the wrestling ring. And if you talk to him, you'll know what I mean. He says, you know... Win any way you can, but remember one simple rule. Always cheat. That's what Tolis has told me. I hope he doesn't uh, teach his children that philosophy. Tag off, and Tolis is the man in the ring, working on that left arm of Al Madrill of San Bernardino, California, one of the biggest, biggest fans of Elvis Presley there ever was. He collects everything he can on Elvis. I mean, he collects photos, record albums, mugs, pictures, you name it. It's just... He's got it all. Posters. Big fan of Elvis Presley's. Late Elvis Presley was quite a big wrestling fan, too, as you know. Biting the fingers of Madrill. Both wrestlers. One has one hand, one has the other. Oh, this, this is terrible.
arm bar. They are working over on the drill. He has not has a chance to tag off to Walter Johnson, who is his tag team partner. In fact, many fans have already forgotten about Walter because Tolis and Starr are working over the one man. In a tag team match, though, uh, this is the way to, to do it as far as tactics go. You, you work on the one wrestler, and Tolis coming off that second strand of ropes right with a boot. That's a size 13 boot, folks. Tolis is not known for little feet. Rowan punches to the face. He decks Tolis, trying to tag. Oh, well, wait a minute. Johnson in there. We got a razzle-dazzle. Look at this. Who's got what where? We've got a star. We've got a wrestling star. And oh, Dugan is dumped by Tolis. <laughs> Dugan puts the boots to the big John Tolis. Now the referee can disqualify all four men and the match. Or let it go on. And he's trying to do that. He's trying to get order in there. And in the meantime, we've got... Wait a minute. We've got a huddle here going between the assassin, Tolis, and Ron Starr. You know? They are discussing some sneaky maneuver. You can believe that. They have 20 seconds on the outside. Starr decides that's the way to go. Goes back. They go back into the huddle. Al Madrill and Walter Johnson inside the ring in the meantime are furious. They want those men back in the ring. Johnson now says, come on, put them up. He says, you guys have been playing dirty long enough. Let's go. Let's do it. I want to do it right here and now. Kick to the middle. Punch to the side of the face. Raking away at the eyes. Ron Starr now catches the big man, gets him off his feet. Kicks him right into the face. Johnson trying to cover up, raking away at the eyes. Now bites the bridge of the nose. Tolis now coming into the ring, adding a little bit more misery to the suffering of Walter Johnson. Goes to work with that corkscrew. Softening up the temple, trying to Utilize that hold he's been very, very, very well known for. Thumb thrust to the throat by the Golden Greek, John Tolis. Raking at the nose and mouth. Punch to the middle, trying to get some sort of power back. Here comes Walter Johnson. Johnson just throwing punches in there. The tag off is to Al Madrill. Al Madrill continuing the punches. He beals Tolis to the center of the ring. A drop kick takes down Tolis. Madrill going over, punches rugged Ron Starr. These are the world tag team champions, Tolis and Starr. Body block, takedown. Oh, Madrill is dumped by the assassin. A knee drop covers Al Madrill for one, two, three, and the referee didn't see it. And gives the win to Tolis and Ron Starr with the help of the assassin. More wrestling's coming up. Whatever you do, don't go away. The winner, Maniac Tolis and Ron Starr.